Well, happy Good Friday to you, friends. I am um, thankful to take a minute to think about all the parallels between our recovery journey, either from sexual betrayal or sexual addiction into post-traumatic growth and the journey of Jesus during Holy Week. I mean, we could spend a really long time talking about this topic. I'm just going to cover a couple of things that I've been pondering this week. I was reading a book about failure. How many times have you read a book about failure? <laughs> it's not something we typically want to think about, but this was a book a friend of mine gave me, and it was all about looking at Jesus's response to us in failure. And the parallels were taken from how Jesus responded to Peter and his failure. So one of the first things I want to look at from Holy Week is the way that Peter failed Jesus by betraying him three times, denying him three times, just as Jesus said he would, and the devastation that that caused him and the devastation it must have caused Jesus. I mean, I don't know if you've really pondered all the ways in which Jesus was failed by the people who loved him the most in his life, these men that were following him and, and ministering to him and doing his ministry with him. They're all scattered, right? Um, in particular, Jesus, who would become the person he built his church upon, um, the person that he appointed to be the first leader. And so um, one thing I absolutely love about the fact that that happened and it is written in the scriptures is that Jesus is not afraid of our failure. He knew it would happen and he still chose and loved Peter. And so whether you are the person with the unwanted sexual behavior or you're the person that's experienced betrayal and you're realizing that your life is a dumpster fire <laughs> um, and you're hopeless and in despair um, and feeling like a failure for multiple different reasons, um, Jesus is not shocked. He is not appalled. Um, he is. He wants to be there for you. And the way that he approached Peter after the resurrection and did this redemptive interaction with him over um, some uh, intimate moments around a campfire, eating fish, having breakfast together, um, and, and how Jesus called Peter back to himself and reinstated his apostleship is absolutely breathtaking. So here's the thing. On um, Thursday at, the, Good, at, at the, the Last Supper and on Good Friday, the day that Jesus was crucified, nobody knew what was going to happen. He had tried to tell them that he was going to conquer sin and death, but nobody really understood what was coming. Jesus was the only one who really got it. And there is a huge parallel with our recovery journeys because when we're in the middle of it, when the death of our marriage, our dreams, our lives is, it's when it's just gone and decimated and lying in a, in a tomb, we really do feel and think hope is, all hope is lost and there's nothing good that can come out of this. But you guys, I have seen over and over again, God take the most hopeless of circumstances in people's lives, in people's marriages. And I've seen miracles happen. I've seen this even in my own life. Now, I did not get the miracle that everybody wants, which is the restored marriage. My marriage actually ended in divorce because of sexual betrayal. So when it ended and I felt like my life was in the tomb, just gone over. Everything I knew was gone and over. Um, I didn't see how there could be hope and joy and life again after that. But I will tell you that even for me, and it can happen for you, there can be new life, there can be joy, there can be life again after either unwanted sexual behavior steals your joy and your life and your sense of purpose, or betrayal steals your life and your joy and your sense of purpose. Consider the fact that when Jesus was alive, all of the people, his, his, all the Jewish people were expecting a great military leader to be their savior and their Messiah. They were not expecting this humble servant, this carpenter who was untrained and yet taught with such authority and anointing. 
Some people knew this is God. But even Jesus's followers who watched him and, and lived their lives with him closely, they were still not expecting the way things went down with a, with a crucifixion, a gruesome beating, a grueling journey to Golgotha and his total death and his suffering. Um, they were not expecting it to go that way. They were expecting Jesus to conquer and have power and lead the way they had seen leaders lead in the past with arrogance and coercion or bribery. I mean, all kinds of corruption, right? And Jesus broke all of that open and he came as a, as a gentle, humble servant, but then he overcame, he rose from the dead. Um, and that, and, and instead of like controlling and subduing all of Rome and the people, um, he called people to himself out of their own free will. And here's what, here's the parallel with recovery, you guys. Sometimes we are not expecting that the miracle is going to come through the pain and through the brokenness and through the death. We want God to come through for us the way we want him to come through for us. So my challenge to you today would be, what are your expectations and your ways that you're holding on to your interpretation of how things are supposed to go in your life, how things are supposed to go in your marriage, that you need to offer up and surrender to God? Um, because let's face it, it often, God's ways are different from ours. And it often does not turn out the way we want it to or expect it. And for a while, it looks like it's just dead and there's no hope. Um, I want to encourage you that there will be resurrection in your life. I don't know what that will look like. And you might need to ask God, show me how you're doing this work in my life. And I will wait on you for the miracle. But the thing is that there's a lot of downtime in between the death and the miracle sometimes. I mean, with Jesus, it was three days. For me, it was probably more like three years <laughs> with my recovery process where I was really doing a lot of hard, grueling work. Um, but that time was necessary for me to experience the new life that God wanted to give me, the reshaping of the way I think, the reshaping of my heart, the refining of all the self-protection and um, some of the things that I had used to build my sense of worth upon um, and the work that Jesus was doing in me was unrecognizable at the time, but now I can look back. So if you know somebody who's gone through this recovery journey and has hope and has gotten to the other side, it is so good, first of all, to remember that their life is not perfect and it's not like you're ever going to the, like arrive to this perfection. That's only Jesus, right? but that we can have new life and new birth come out of our pain and our suffering. Sometimes being able to see that happen in somebody else's life, you can borrow their faith. You can borrow their, the, the um, hope that they have gotten through their experience. I also want to point out that when Jesus uh, rose from the dead and like the women saw him outside of the tomb, like at first they didn't recognize him. Some of the disciples didn't recognize him. Like when they're walking along the road and he's talking to them and they don't even realize that's who he is. So my other point of a parallel with um, Holy Week and recovery is that sometimes God is working in our life and we don't even recognize it. We don't see it. I know for me, I had so many demands of God of how I wanted things to go on my recovery journey. And one of my big things I had to learn was to let go, to surrender, um, to surrender the outcome of situations, to surrender my will and to ask God to help me accept his will. Um, that was hard because for a lot of time, I did not trust him because I thought, gosh, you really failed me with how my life has gone. That's just my honest truth. I felt like that for a long time. But over time, I learned to see things from a different perspective. I learned to recognize where he had come in and done miracles for me, and I hadn't even recognized that it was him. So my encouragement to you as you go um, through this Good Friday where we, we celebrate the fact that Jesus was willing to sacrifice his life for us, and we go towards Resurrection Sunday where we celebrate his power to overcome sin and death, and to give new life and miracle resurrection power in our lives, 
is to hold your hands open to God and say, Jesus, you're, you proved your love for me and you proved your power for me. Show me ways in which I am demanding that you do things the way I want them to be, um, where I am trying to be God. And I will, I will have to do this every day of my life, you guys. Surrender my will and surrender my desires and my plans to God so that I can do his will. Um, and believing that there will be new life, there will be resurrection. It may not be the way I want it but I really do believe it can be even better than what we could ever think of in our own minds. So I hope you have a really awesome Resurrection Sunday and a beautiful celebration of what God has done for us.